previously on MasterChef. The competition for the title heated up. This could be a dessert that you could put in the restaurant. My cupcake is horrible. 28-year-old financial advisor Sharon shocked the judges. Sharon, well done. By baking the perfect cupcake. Absolutely phenomenal. After a rocky start. It's looking a little bit embarrassing. We're burning buns and we're not even cooking burgers. Butter lettuce. Butter? What the hell are you asking for? The red team turned it around. <laughs> College student Slim fell short of the judges' expectations. I'm not going to even eat this sauce because I don't eat garlic boiled in cream. And for Tony and Farouk, the consequences were devastating. Take off your apron. The time is done in MasterChef. Tonight, some will make the best dishes yet. You knock this challenge out of the park. This is the most unique dish we've seen in the history of MasterChef. But what's under this mystery box will bring one competitor to tears. I don't want to be on the camera. Don't worry about the camera. What's the matter? And it may cost her the MasterChef crown. Now, nine amateur cooks remain. The last contestant standing will receive $250,000, a cookbook publishing deal, and become the first American MasterChef. Welcome back to the Master Chef Kitchen. There's nine of you left, and the standard is going up from here. We're going to really, really expect you to put professional level food on the plate today. As the competition intensifies, we need to be spot on with our dishes, really thinking about plate presentation, flavor profiles, especially when, oh, let me check that. We're down to the final nine. As always, the day begins with of the mystery box challenge. The contestants will have only 60 minutes to create a glorious dish using a surprise mystery box ingredient. Only the top three most tantalizing dishes will be tasted by the judges. Now, in every mystery box challenge, usually the ingredients are underneath the box. Today, all the ingredients, bar one, are outside the box. Cucumber, apple, tomatoes, prosciutto, peanuts, asparagus. There is one mystery ingredient underneath that box. Oh my goodness, like what could possibly be under the box? Right, on the count of three, slowly lift the box. One. Your adrenaline's pumping, your heart's racing, your eyes are open, and you're just like, what the heck is in this mystery box? Two. I wouldn't even begin to guess what the mystery box challenge is going to be today. I mean, monkey ninjas could fly out of the sky and show us knife techniques. So who, who really knows? Three. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I about backed up and fell over because it scared me so much. I wasn't expecting to see a live crab in front of me. There it is. The most amazing Dungeness crab. It's alive and kicking. Now come alive in the challenge. Put your best dish forward. To become a master chef, you must work with the freshest ingredients. But this ingredient is fresher than one competitor can handle. I'm a Hindu. I was raised Hindu, and we don't believe in taking the life of an animal. I grew up in a vegetarian home. I've never gone hunting, fishing. I've never killed anything before. Excited? Yes, yes, yes. One hour to cook the most amazing Dungeness crab dish. Starting from now. Off you go. Shita, are you OK? What's wrong? Tell me, two seconds. What's wrong? No, Shita, come here, two seconds. I don't want to be on the camera. Don't worry about the camera. What's the matter? I've, I've never killed anything in my life. You've never what? I don't think I can kill the crab. It's a cool concept. It's... Don't get upset. Come on. You, you've never killed a crab or never. lobster, fish? Never. No? Okay. 
What do you want to do with I, the dish? I have to grow up a little no, bit. You tell me what you want to do with it, and I can help. It's like <sighs> the hardest thing. It's just put it into the water. Moving around. It's moving around. Okay. Why don't it's I just, fine. I'll, why don't I just I'll, drop it in the water for you? I'll do it. You sure? Yes. That'd be great if you could. You know that. Yes. You can do it. Okay. You're here to win. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Okay. Come on. You'll be fine. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. While Chital wrestles with the thought of killing a crab, others have no problem at all. Bye bye. It smells amazing. Incredible. We are super excited to try these dishes. Light years away from where you guys started. I'm going to make a roll of uh, my crab wrapped in fresh cucumber. And that's going to be wrapped again in prosciutto to add some saltiness into it. I want to utilize every bit of the ingredients that I've been given. But that's dangerous because I can make it too complicated. I can completely lose my sense of direction with it. So that was what I was a bit nervous about. What do you got, Mike? What's going on? I'm doing uh, crab kind of two ways, a little east, east, west kind of deal. When I finish off the Asian sauce, I'm going to try to use some of that, that uh, crab butter in there to kind of finish off with that. It's a little, it's, a, it's definitely a risk. Fusion equals confusion sometimes, right? We yeah, talk absolutely. About that. I, I agree with you. What I'm going to do is create some kind of like crab, like a warm crab salad, and I will serve that with like a spicy gazpacho sauce. I'm trying to just go all out with something that's, you know, extremely flavorful and uh, fun to look at as well. That's my strategy right now. Getting a lot of uh, yeah. technique going out there. I think they've yeah. got the idea and they're pushing the box a little bit. Absolutely. We're going to get some restaurant quality and dishes, hopefully. Lee, I believe, is making a gazpacho, and that's what I would have done with this yeah. challenge. So I'm really excited right. to try that one. They have to respect this ingredient. Today. They have to really respect it. Even the most seasoned chefs can have difficulties preparing a crab dish. Just stop for two seconds. That needs to be cooked, otherwise it would be flavorless. You'll have a dry crab. The minute you, you separate want to cook it, it first. I'm sorry. It, the crab is live. Yes, sir. Right, so you're torturing it now. So not only is it inhumane, but you're going to ruin the flavor. Seal that there. Yes, sir. That's the goodness gone. But the minute you start doing that, you've left the flavor on the chopping board. The flavor needs to stay in the crab. So if I was you, I'd get that. Yes, sir. Cooked um, as soon as possible. Yeah? Sorry about that. You can't separate, pull it apart in an inhumane way. Absolutely. And all the goodness is on the board. So I'm expecting a very dry crab there. In our faith, every, every living thing has a soul, so... That's it. So it's tough. Clock is ticking. I have to kill this animal. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, to be honest. Today's Mystery Box Challenge is not for the weak of heart. And one contestant's beliefs are clashing with the competition. I've never killed anything before. So seeing that little live creature and knowing that if I'm here to compete, I am going to have to take the soul of this crab. I'm going to kill an animal. I better do something really, really amazing with it. Good. Well done. Big deep breath. Excellent. OK, great. Yeah. You're over the hurdle now. Yeah. OK, good. And what are you making? What are you going to be doing? I'm just making a simple Thai nice. crab curry. So it'll be like a nice, light, sweet crab curry. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Keep going. Thank yeah. you. Just under 10 minutes to go, guys. What do you got, Sharon? I'm going outside the box really try to impress you guys with some sort of gourmet tartan 
what could go wrong with this dish. Anything can completely fall apart on it and not work out that way. Do you have a plan B in case that happens? Uh, this is the first time I think I've ever seen you actually look nervous. Well, I got... Are you nervous? I, no, I just got to knock this out, man. Who's your okay. biggest competition here? I think Lee and I both come from the same place. We got similar passions. We cook with the same style. And that makes me a bit nervous because I got some tricks under my sleeve that I think he does as well. Sharon, is, he's a talented cook, you know, but I don't believe that he cooks from the heart. I really don't. I don't believe that he has the passion that I have, and that is the main difference between us. Five minutes to go. We should now start thinking about plating it up and putting those finishing touches to that Dungeness crab. How are we looking, Lee? We're looking fantastic. I'm, uh... Ah, he's got the ring out. He's a I PVC know, boy. The ingredients are coming together. Everything's uh, flavored up. It's all about the plating. Some uh, gazpacho on the loose. It smells and looks amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. Keep it going, guys, yes? I have a career in finance that I've done very, very well at, but there's a burning desire in my heart to do something else. I want to be a chef. I'm going all out without holding anything back. And a quarter of a million dollars is no joke. Keep it going, guys. Yes? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Uh, done. Everybody step away from there. Dish, please. I didn't finish my plate. Once again, I failed at time management, and uh, it was not pretty whatsoever. It looked like a pile of crap on bread. Chitel, how are you feeling? Awesome. Yay! You can do yeah, it. I finished. Good. Well done. I'm feeling extremely proud of myself for having gotten through it without completely falling apart. Having scrutinized all nine dishes, the judges are ready to pick the three most mouth-watering for tasting. Whoever creates the winning dish will then be in control of the next stage of the competition. Look at my dish and go, that's a pretty good looking dish, man. Like, good job. I was hoping that I could get that win for sure. First one. Having watched the way you executed the dish, we're excited to taste it. I'm looking at the plate, and the plate's smiling at me. Today, I'm going to be in the top three, and I have no doubt about that. That dish belongs to... Sharon. Let's go, big boy. My eyes lit up. I was like, yes. I felt great, because I really put my heart into that plate. This dish has visual impact, very intricate. Dangerous thing wrapping the crab with a prosciutto. The actual shape of the roll, we're looking for a texture of a crunch, a vibrant citrus flavor with a delicate sweetness of the crab. The delicate sweetness, right. And the citrus will be in the apple reduction with the ginger. So make sure you incorporate that in there too, Chef. I love the fact you're now telling me how to eat. Thank you so oh, much. At the age of 43, I know how to eat properly, Absolutely. but it's very gracious of you. Thank you. Should I put a bib on, or...? No, no. <laughs> the problem with that dish is, automatically, I want more. It is delicious, fresh, vibrant. You've respected the ingredients. But you've been very clever and very, very uh, creative. Love it. Thank you. The second dish that we think is going to taste delicious belongs to... <laughs> Lee. So basically, it's Dungeness crab salad with some uh, fresh avocado and then uh, gazpacho andalus as the sauce. Your dishes haven't been the worst. They haven't been the greatest. They've just kind of kind of been in the middle somewhere. This one just screamed to me right away, and I'm so excited to try it because this is exactly what I would have been making with this challenge. Mm. 
you knocked this challenge out of the park. Thank you this very much. This is yeah. awesome. You have gone from down here to jumping up to the top, and now you're forced to be reckoned with. So keep on that track, OK? Thank you very much, Jeff. The third dish they were excited about tasting. And I can't believe I'm saying this. Shit out. I'm shocked when they call my name. I thought that the third person would be Mike. That would make sense, you know? I was feeling pretty bad. I was like, because I wanted to be up there. Don't think of my dish. What could I have done? What could I have done to have made it a top three dish? The first two minutes into the challenge, it looked like you were done, beat, defeated. The smell, the excitement from the sauce, the aroma, and the delicacy in terms of the way you cook the crab is what we're dying to taste. Considering what we had asked you to do, you might criticize this dish perhaps for being too simple, but I think that it excels in its simplicity. Congratulations. I'm sure that crab is very, very happy to give his life for this dish. <laughs> Good show, Good show. Three stunning dishes. Now we have to select one winner from those three. Tough one. Very That was a very difficult choice. But the reason why we chose this individual, because all three of us believe this is the best and the most unique dish we've seen so far in the history of MasterChef. And that dish belongs to... The top three dishes have been tasted. Sharon's crab cucumber roll. Lee's crab salad with gazpacho and Chital's crab curry. But only one can win this mystery box challenge. I think I brought in a lot of passion and a lot of heart, and that shows in the amount of flavor that was in that dish. I think the flavors of my dish were well-balanced, rustic, and I think that that's what would win for this challenge. I don't want to lose. This is the best dish we've seen so far in the history of MasterChef. Congratulations! Lee, well done. Look out, Lee's in town. You've really proven to yourself and us today that you are a force to be reckoned with. I was pissed. I could make a gazpacho with my eyes closed, and it doesn't feel good not being in first place. Lee, ready for your next challenge? Absolutely. Let's go. <laughs> Lee now gets to choose the main ingredient for the invention test. Whatever he selects, everybody else must cook with. Whoever makes the worst dish will be eliminated from MasterChef. As always, the theme of this challenge is in the hands of the judges. The theme of today is romance. Now, listen to me. You're tall, you're good looking. You know how to woo a lady, right? You know how to seduce a lady. Yes or no? Well, that's how I got my girlfriend, so yeah. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here today, and I cook for her every day. Now, you're faced with a huge advantage right now, because of what you select, everybody else cooks with, yeah? What don't you want under these cloths? One ingredient I don't want is any kind of chocolate. My girlfriend hates chocolate. I'm not a huge chocolate fan. <laughs> it doesn't get any more romantic than that. Ready? Yep. Passion fruit. I lived in Hawaii, where these grew wild all over, and they are intoxicating. And from the land where love was invented, we have the finest Italian burrata. Burrata. One of the most unique milk products, perhaps, in the entire world. Burrata. Mm -hmm. It's mozzarella with ricotta and buttermilk on the inside. Amazing. Out of these three ingredients, the one ingredient you choose, everybody else cooks with. So be very clever. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough choice. I am going to go with... A 
OK, good. Lee, excited? Very excited, Jeff. OK. The theme across today's challenge is romance. Lee had three stunning ingredients to choose from. The first ingredient was the most amazing array of chocolates. The second ingredient, passion fruit. Passion fruit. Oh, boy. How do you put together flavors when you don't know what an ingredient even tastes like? And the third ingredient, burrata. Burrata cheese is delicious stuff, but I couldn't think of a romantic dish to do with it. Lee chose passion fruit. Fragrant, stunning passion fruit. Don't even go anywhere near playing safe. One of you will be leaving MasterChef. You've all got two and a half minutes in that pantry. Starting from now. Off you go, guys. For the two youngest competitors, a romantic theme challenge may be a big problem. I don't have a boyfriend, and I haven't really dated, and so I just feel like I'm going in totally blind, and I've never cooked for a guy or made a romantic dinner for a guy, but I'm going to try to do the best I can if it's passion this. I suck at romance. I absolutely do. It's, it's horrible. That's difficult for me to be like, oh, hi, honey, how are you? This is my gift to you. I can't do that. One hour to seduce us with your dishes. Starting from now. I like to play to uh, my strengths. And I know passion fruit real well. I grew up with it. I have some ideas up my sleeve. The judges are going to be blown away. Smell that. I mean, it just is so natural, pungent. Yeah, and incredibly. I think you, yeah, I think that it's one of those things that you don't really want to cook because it starts separating everything. Mm -hmm. Once you go over 212 degrees and bring it yep. to a boil, it starts to kind of coagulate. You start cooking this and you reduce it down, it becomes bitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't think it would go with lamb, probably not. not. At all. Too, no. too delicate. Pork would go brilliantly mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, certainly for creating a romantic dish, there couldn't be a more intriguing ingredient. Oh, young Whitney. What do we got going on? I am gonna sear your, your scalp. Okay. Hey, my, What's uh, that? Shrimp. And this is my passion fruit uh, glaze. So passion it. fruit glaze yes. and a balsamic reduction? Yes. Now, if you were on a first date with a with a guy that you were into, tell me about the dinner you would cook for him. This looks sexy to me. So now what are you going to do with it? I'm going to make it as sexy as I can so it'll be a romantic dish that you'll remember. Right, Mike, what are you doing? I'm gonna do like a kind of a Japanese uh, inspired sort of dish, beef tataki. Where's the passion fruit? Here, I'm gonna infuse that in the ponzu. It's gonna be a passion fruit ponzu. Okay, great. Thank Good you, luck. Chef. Thank you. Right, David, what is that? It's a spicy saffron shrimp. I'm making a passion fruit mango. Looks like um, a fruit salad there. More of a salsa, so I'm gonna have some, some acid and vinegar in there as well. Proofs in the taste. Good luck, David. I hope there's a lot of romance being created out there. We want to be wooed and seduced by your dishes. I want to taste sexiness, sassiness, passion, romance. All of that should come through in what you're cooking. You're doing lamb chops and shrimp. And I'm actually going to do it on skewers, so like little smaller skewers and have like a little fruit fondue in the middle. So like, because that's why I think of romance. You take things, you dip it in, you feed it right. to each other. But a fondue, you think of fondue, you go to dessert. You fondue with the protein? Yes. Yes. You have David, who has kind of been in the middle recently. So it'd be interesting to see if he can actually pull something together, because God knows what kind of a twisted view on romance that he has. <laughs> Slim right. is putting together what seems to be some sort of a family-style platter. Now, I don't know what kind of passion is in that, but... No, 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 no. Maybe, yeah. maybe she missed the mark. Not much passion there. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. it's going to be a celebration of her going home. She's going to yeah. share it with everybody. I'm steaming that I didn't win this last challenge. In order for me to get back on top, I need to push it. I decide to cook my dish sous vide. Sous vide literally means in vacuum. It doesn't allow any juice to evaporate, and if executed well, will provide you with an absolutely stunning piece of meat. I go and try to vacuum seal my bag with my filet. Push the button. 
Okay, what is going on here? So Ryan, what are, you, what are you doing? Sous vide. I'm trying to, but this damn thing is like more complicated than any woman I've ever met. Vacuum seal, right, Chuck? So yeah, it's, a, well, it's gotta be straight. But it's not. But it's not. It's not. It's not. And it's sucking, but it doesn't seal it. You've done this before? No. 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 I'm here to push it. I'm here to push it. Sharon, it's a very adventurous thing to be doing, having never used a machine. Yeah, on the verge of absolute stupidity or an absolute genius. All right, guys. Less than 30 minutes. Half of your time is up. I'm, I'm gonna have to cancel this. This is making so much on time. I'm not sure what's going on over here. I may not finish this dish in time. This damn thing is more complicated than any woman I've ever met. I'm, I'm gonna have to cancel this. This is. I'm not sure what's going on over here. Damn. The thing is not working. I may not finish this dish in time. Let's try a fresh one. Open that Thank you. There you go. Let's hope. Oh. There you go. There you go. It's done. Fantastic. Yeah. Really, really appreciate yeah. it. I'm supposed to have my meat done, move on to the other stuff. OK, 20 minutes left, folks. 20 minutes to create the romance of your life. I can't believe he's done that. You never use a sous vide machine, basically avoiding in a bag. In right. an elimination round. Yeah. I mean, he could, so, it could cost him his place in Master Chef. Yeah. But sous vide is very, very, very risky stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, if Sharon pulls this off, it could be the best dish ever right. in Master Chef. Right. Ah. Uh, uh, collard greens start to crisp up. And I thought, oh man, I'm in trouble. This is Master Chef. You know, you're not at home cooking for your mom. Lee, what do you got going on for us? The idea behind this dish is romance and relationships, they don't always come from where you would expect them. And that's the whole idea behind it, that things can work together. So I have the beef tenderloin, which is going to be a simple saute, sear on the pan, finish in the oven. And I have my prawns working on over here with the marinade that I made with the passion fruit juice. And uh, I'm just going to have fun with it, like I have fun with my girlfriend, you know, when I cook for her and then... That's my whole inspiration behind this. All right. All right, make it lovely. OK, guys, coming up for the last minute. Let's hope that it tastes as good as it smells. I don't have love in my heart, you know? I, have, I don't have this wonderful romantic love life happening that I can tap into and, and figure out how to plate that and create this romantic dish. I just don't have that. Start putting those finishing touches on that romantic, delicious dish. Let the passion fruit shine. Come on. There's so much at stake today. If I got eliminated, I would feel like I let myself down. Romance. My fiance will tell you that I'm, I'm a romantic kind of guy. Everything that I am is on that plate. It's going to be magic. Come on, make it count. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Woo! Well done. Woo! Well done, well done. The anxiety escalates in the MasterChef kitchen as the judges prepare to taste all nine dishes. The contestant with the worst dish will be leaving MasterChef. Let's start off with the most ambitious use of machinery ever in MasterChef. That's you, Sharon, a sous vide machine. Let's go. Are you mad? A sous vide machine to vacuum pack your beef. Why now when one of you is going home tonight? Because I have to step it up. I'm here to learn, I'm here to grow, and I'm here to not look back and doubt myself. OK. Tell me how you incorporated passion fruit. So the first step was a demi infused with passion fruit. Then I did a champagne vinaigrette with the seeds and the pulp of the passion fruit. Here's the thing. When you're using a sous vide yeah. machine, there's a huge chance for you to kind of do the exact opposite of what you're looking to do. Instead of imparting more flavor into the beef, it just leaves it as a dull, gray, boring piece of flabby protein.
The beef is, is sublime. It, it literally does melt in your mouth. It's like butter. And you do pick up a lot of that sear flavor, some of the butter, the thyme that you were basing it. And I saw all that in your pan. Great stuff. OK, Jake, let's go, please. I think I put a lot of romance on my plate. My dish oozed sexuality and romance. What is that, please? It's a sexy, seared piece of uh, filet. And then I use the uh, passion fruit as a vinaigrette. So you mentioned the passion fruit as a vinaigrette. Yes. And that's it. The problem here with this dish, Jake, is you've missed the point. The passion fruit didn't have to be the hero of the dish, but the passion fruit's been underused. Truthfully, it's one of your weakest dishes. You know, I thought the plate was very romantic and had a lot of passion in it and visually pleasing. You know, maybe it was a little too subtle for him. I mean, maybe Gordon likes it rough. After Jake's disappointing dish, can the ladies bring romance back into the room? Whitney. What is that? Passion fruit glazed shrimp and frisbee salad. I think the shrimp are... They're overcooked. And I think the passion fruit doesn't really come through. It seems very amateur. You know, I know at the beginning, I was the one that had to make the choice about you being here. You know, and I put my neck out on the line. And I hope that this isn't the dish that gets you sent home. Tracy, let's go, please. OK, gentlemen, this is a beef tenderloin over fingerling potatoes. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. Oh, God. I will confirm that it's 90% it, it, it's unedible. Chitelle, describe the romance in your dish. I have a very sweet and savory sauce. I use some cayenne pepper to just give it a bit of kick. What I can say that's good is that you chose a nice plate to put it in. Next up, uh, Slim, please. Thank you. With a series of unsuccessful dishes, it's up to Slim to turn things around. Going into this challenge, I, oh my god, I need to win. I gave up graduating at Loyola University, New Orleans. Before coming out here, I only had two more months, so there's so much at stake for me. This is actually a um, sweet and savory dish with um, lamb, shrimp, and fresh fruit. And this is a passion fruit ginger sauce. Oh, <laughs> When you put lamb on a stick, you've got to at least cut the fat off. There's a lot of ginger in the sauce, right? Yes, sir. If we're on a date, and you cook that dish for me, I'd go to the bathroom, and you'd never see me again. I'd bolt out the door. Damn. You gotta be kidding me. Slim, this is like a, a buffet gone bad. Go back to your station. I'm not tasting this crap. You guys have to, at this point in the competition, you need to be listening to what we're telling you about what we're producing, because this is ridiculous. Buffet gone bad. I'm not tasting this crap. This is ridiculous. That was horrible. Uh, that was absolutely the worst thing you can possibly do to somebody's dish is without even tasting it, throwing it away. Wow. This is serious. I could not believe that level of emotion came out of Joe. Joe threw it in the trash, like slammed it in the trash. After that, I was like, she's out of here. She is going home today. Mike, let's go. When Joe came over and slammed Slim's dish into the trash can, it definitely got my attention, because I was thinking, oh my god. I don't want my dish to be going in the dumps like that. I hope it's good enough. 
Wow, look at those colors. What I have here is a beef tataki sort of lotus flower with a passion fruit ponzu. I mean, the beef is raw. And absolutely delicious. You've got several fruits going on. Grapes, kumquats, strawberries, passion fruit. And it's almost like you've sort of enhanced the flavor of the beef because you managed to take the density out of the rawness of the beef in a really clever way. Well done. David, let's go, please. OK. Describe it, please. On your left-hand side, we have me with the arrow through the heart, spicy, savory side. And on the left, you have the delicate, gorgeous sweetness of my fiance. So I think together, you know, they make a perfect marriage. I want to keep on eating this. <laughs> please feel free. Amazing. <laughs> it's not fruit salad and shrimp. It's effectively a very intellectual dish that kind of plays off the, you got heat and you got the sweetness of the fruit. A very tricky and complex dish uh, in its simplicity, but um, you nailed it, buddy. Thank you, sir. Next up, Lee, please. Winning the crab challenge and going into the invention test, I'm extremely happy, I'm extremely confident, but um, I'm still humble. What is that, please? The inspiration behind this plate is the imperfections of, of relationships and things that are not supposed to go together that actually do go very well together. All of you should come up here and try this. This is really propelling Lee to uh, master chef levels. Experience what we're experiencing, will you? All the knife and forks are on here. Run up, have a taste. Quick as you can. What an honor, I mean, to be a model to follow for the rest. It's overwhelming, but at the same time, it proves that I am going all the way. I'm not gonna taste Lee's dish. The way I look at it is I'm not here to just tag along. I'm here to win. Lee, really good job. Really good job indeed. Thank you very much, Chef. Thank you. After tasting all nine dishes, the judges confer on which dish won their hearts and which ones were lacking the passion. The cook with the worst dish will be leaving MasterChef. Let's get to our winner. Today, we were looking for the best dish, a dish that oozed passion. And there was one individual that did that. For the second time. Lee, congratulations. Well done. It's only um, less than a year ago that I started getting into this elevated level of, of cooking. World renowned chefs and restaurateurs are, are tasting something that I produce, and I'm getting these praises and these compliments. You've set the pace in MasterChef. Normally, We'll call up the worst three dishes out of the nine. Tonight, we're going for four. This has taken us by somewhat of a surprise because they are individuals we thought would deliver romance. I want all four of you to come forward right now. They are the girls. That's right. All four of you, please. Step forward. My immediate thought was, that sucks, because it's the women who were cooking for male judges, and apparently we suck at wooing. If there was ever a time for all four of you to shine that would deliver romance oozing off that plate, it would have been today. And sadly, you delivered the opposite. I just felt like, how is it possible that four vibrant, wonderful women have no concept how to plate romance and love. It was not doing what we asked, and the food was not tasty, like nothing good about it. I don't know what you guys were thinking. I definitely felt like this isn't something I want the judges to remember me by, because this is not me. This is not 
my kind of cooking that I do on a regular basis. I mean, I don't make food that sucks, and that's basically what I gave them today. For you four ladies to put forth food that seemed very heavy-handed, very truck stop style, you know, yeah. just very heavy stuff. It's almost like we're in the wrong competition. Shit's out. Go back to your station, please. Chitelle, we know you can do better. It's not a proud feeling to know that the only reason I'm safe is because the other three dishes and the judges' opinions were worse than mine. Tracy. Do not take your apron off. Get back on your station. We expect to see a lot more out of you next time. Yes, Chef. Slim, Whitney, your experience, or lack of experience, has caught up with you both. Whitney, a couple of weeks ago, you were blowing the competition out of the water. Now, you're struggling to keep your neck above the water. The competition's taken on a completely different pace, and unfortunately, you're getting weaker. A strawberry that looks half-eaten, stuck on a bed of soggy salad with a semi-decent cooked shrimp, right now doesn't bear the title of the first ever MasterChef America. I don't even want to think about being eliminated. I know I really need to step up my game. I really want to stand out and show that, you know, I have what it takes to be here to the end. Slim, you presented a dish today that was almost like a, a welcome plate in a senior home before they go off in the box. And I, I know you think it's funny, but I don't find it funny because I've seen you cook really good. And a lot of us stuck our neck out on the line for you. Today, you made us look stupid. I've been having such a crappy past few challenges. I've been ending up at the bottom every single time, and I have to redeem myself. I hope this isn't going to be the end of the line for me. Everyone's progressing because they're listening and getting better and better and better. And you've stumbled on a T-junction where you're not getting better. If I had to give you another hour, what would you make? I would actually make the same sauce, but with much less ginger than I did before. But overall, I actually would have kept it the same. You don't get it. You should have changed it completely. There was no fixing that dish. The fact that you would recreate and modify that same dish Without instills progress. no confidence in us. I mean, that is really not the answer we were looking for. Okay. Slim. Please take off your apron. Your time in MasterChef is done. I just want to say that I thank the three of you chefs for actually being here and nurturing me. Um, this is absolutely a wonderful opportunity to have been here and to have learned for all, from you. I'm sorry. If, I haven't learned as much as you thought I, I would have, but I actually do appreciate it very much. You're young, you're tenacious. If there's one small piece of advice, next five years, act like a sponge and just absorb, yes, absorb, absorb. You'll surprise yourself in two years, let alone five years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good luck to you. I accept that I'm leaving MasterChef. I like what I've learned. I like what's gone on, good and bad, because that's made me who I am today. Honestly, with this experience, I'm going to go work in a kitchen, and that's going to keep me from being an amateur cook. Coming up, the remaining eight are about to be split into opposing teams for a challenge to cater the most important day of one couple's lives. Sharon, yes, what sir. in the are you doing? Oh, my God. But to avoid disaster, can someone get the fire extinguisher? Gordon has to take control. What's going on, guys? You need an intervention? Go go it. Oh, it's a finesse! It's a wedding! The team that loses will face the dreaded pressure test, where one more contestant's dream of becoming America's first master chef will come to a bitter end. Slim, please take off your apron. With one more cook out of the competition, 
The remaining eight are about to be split into opposing teams for a challenge to cater the most important day of one couple's life. Sharon, what in the f are you doing? Oh my God. But to avoid disaster. Can someone get the fire extinguisher? Gordon has to take control. What's going on, guys? You need an intervention? You've got no choice. What? Oh, it's a finesse! It's a wedding! The team that loses will face the dreaded pressure test, where one more contestant's dream of becoming America's first master chef will come to a bitter end. Surviving home cooks have been brought to an upscale Malibu country club to meet the judges. Wow, look at you guys. Immaculate. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yesterday was all about romance, yes? Yes. And you did that successfully. Well, today you're going to repeat that because today all of you are going to be cooking for a wedding. Wow. Oh, wow. That's right. 230 guests. Wow. Oh. I was like, oh my god, this is the real deal. This is somebody's wedding. Clearly, the biggest day of their lives, the most important meal of their lives, is now in your hands. Have been married for 14 years. 17. Six months. Six months. Oh, Just congratulations. Trust me, from the minute you wake up to the appetizer, the entree, it's a day that you never, ever forget make them remember this day for all the right reasons. I'm getting married six months from today. I know I wouldn't want somebody to mess up my wedding reception, so I'm going to really make sure that the bride and groom enjoy their food. You'll be competing in two teams. Lee. Yes, Chef. You won that amazing challenge yesterday. You get to pick the teams. All right. Come over. So think carefully. So, um... My first choice would be Jake. Nice. Jake and I have uh, worked together in every uh, team challenge so far. We understand each other, and you know I need him by my side. Second choice, Mike. All right, Mike. My third pick, the heartbeat of our team today, Tracy. All right, all right, Trey. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy had one of the worst dishes we've seen yesterday. Good point. And Sharon had one of the best. He's been doing a great job. Why would you be leaving him on the sideline? Today, as a team challenge, you know, it's all about teamwork, and that's going to play a huge part. And I need nobody to step on each other's feet, and that will lead us to victory. Right. The basic's not good enough. Not for today and not for my team. Wow. You know, being a competitor, I didn't choose Sharon for my team because when we win this challenge, I want him to be on the losing side, so there is a chance for him to go home. How do you feel being out there? Not picked. I'm getting fueled up. I'm getting excited. I'm getting inspired. So I can't wait to work with my team and deliver. Lee didn't pick me. Great. I'm over it, you know? If Lee wanted to win, he would have picked me and sealed the deal. Red team. Where's the leader? Who's taking control today? I'm Whitney. Looking right I'm looking at you, buddy. Yeah. Go for it. I will, Chef. You will. Absolutely. There's no running out of food. No chance. There's no overcooking any of the dishes. Everything has to be right on, 100% perfect. Each team will cook 115 appetizers of Caesar salad and goat cheese tartlet, followed by 115 entrees each, surf and turf, mashed potatoes, steamed vegetables, and fried onions. The judges will decide the winning team based on performance in a professional kitchen, ability to stick to the wedding's strict timetable, and most important of all, getting the flavors perfect. Lee. Yes, Chef. You're going to be leading the blue team and cooking for the groom side of the dining room. Red team, you're taking care of the bride side, the red side, 115 guests each. Am I nervous at this point? Yeah, 
I'm nervous. It's a complicated menu for sure. And I'm thinking, do we even have enough time to do this for 20 people? I'm like, 115 people? Are you serious? At the end of this special day, there will be a losing team. That losing team will face a pressure test. Got it? Yes, yes, sure. OK, and you make sure you get your game face on. Because this is no rehearsal. Yes, sure. yes chef. Yeah. OK, let's head up into the kitchens, yeah, and get changed. All right. All right. Yeah. Handpicked blue team and Sharon's red team will have just three hours to prepare the appetizers and entrees for the wedding's 230 guests. You know, the way it breaks down is uh, two teams, each responsible for 115 people. So we had our work cut out for us for sure, but you know, the blue team functions as a well oiled machine. Dave, yeah. you're going to be portioning the beef. Mike, you're attacking the salmon. I okay, got it. Tracy. You're going to start portioning the Caesar salad, OK? Lee is a born leader. You know, he's very organized, very level-headed. And so I think the blue team's chances of winning today are excellent. I mean, we have Jake, the meat specialist. We have Mike, who's technically skilled. And then, you know, me. Keep it going, guys. So who feels comfortable with prepping that? That is the third of the three sauces. That was our first game plan. Let's decide who does what so there's no confusion. Here's the fresh whole Canadian salmon. Okay. I will break that down. You're gonna... You can put my name down on that. Including cooking it? Absolutely. My first step is to break down salmon. I'm the meat guy, so I'll take charge of that. I'll do it. Don't worry about it. I am just jacked. I am ready to go. I grab a chef's knife, and I start filleting my salmon. I'm halfway there, and then right at that moment, Chef Ramsay approaches me. Sharon. Yes, Chef. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Yes, what yes. in the f are you doing? You've now just butchered that thing. He just starts tearing me up. I'm like, ah. Oh. These things are hundreds of dollars worth. Do you understand? Don't take your whole team down. Don't sink everybody. Oh. May I salvage the other side of it? That is Sharon's mishandling of the salmon is costing the red team precious time. These things are hundreds of dollars worth. Do you understand? I realized right then and there, I'm like, oh my god, he's right. What am I doing? Is this okay. unusable, chef? That is May I salvage the other side of it? Chef? It's busted. It's gone. Forget it, OK? I know not picking Sharon was a little surprising to the judges, but after seeing him butcher the hell out of that salmon, I know I made the right choice. I'm extremely happy with the team I picked, and they're delivering big time. Skinning it is easy. Lift that up, yep. tilt that in there, yep. and lift up. Bend the knife at the end. Understood. Chef, thank you for your time. The red team's gotten off to a rocky start. But with wedding guests beginning to arrive, the blue team under Lee appear to have their 115 appetizers and entrees under control. That's a beautiful little filet. Look at that. Finish the toddlers. Jake will do the food. OK, fantastic. Great. Jakey. Yeah. Keeping it clean. We are all good in that department, my friend. I am here to make you look good. I was quite positive, I mean, that we were going to kick ass. And uh, it just felt like the red team, they don't have that. So that's the last thing we need. Just do that. You know what? You need to stop yelling at me. End of story. OK, well, you need to just do it. I don't have time for drama. I don't care about don't drama. Scream. It's you keep not coming necessary. back, let's just get the lemons done. The red team, again, you know, is running around like a bunch of chickens with their head cut off. David, David, what are you doing? You're wasting time. Come on, come on move. That's up. Put it over there. You're done. I have two jalapeno peppers. OK. He says, I mean, am I going to cut everything else in half? With the red team in utter chaos, Sharon realizes he must pull them together if they're going to have any chance of winning. Dave, come over here, guys. Guys, she's don't wait, wait, wait. I know this is not easy. I know this is not fun. But we're here. Let's pull this together and let's knock this out. Let's put a heart. Every plate comes out of there with love, OK? Hey, I'm definitely feeling the pressure. I feel like the blue team is moving a lot faster than we are. I felt like they were always one step ahead of us. When our dressing was done, they're already working on chopping up the lettuce. I felt like they were always one step ahead of us. This is the Caesar dressing. But I'll tell you one thing, that we consistently made sure that everything tasted absolutely perfectly. It tastes a little vinegary to me. Um, I mean, I followed the recipe. Do you think it needs okay. more pepper? It says... I think the cheese will, will take the acid down. All right. With perfect flavors being a fundamental criteria to impress the judges,
David has taken full responsibility for quality control of the seasoning on all the Red Team's dishes. Hey, Whitney, can I steal that pepper from you? All three of the judges have been riding us really hard about the right level of seasoning. So that's like what I'm really focusing on. I just tasted David's potatoes, and they're excellent. They're yeah, good? Yeah, like really good. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Great, buddy. Good job, man. Way to go. Over on the blue team, it seems their speedy work on the salad leaves has led to some fairly basic mistakes. Is that your lettuce on there? It's all done. I was just consolidating everything. Yep. I'd like to check it first. Yes, chef. Did you prep all this? Yes, chef. And get 115 are the most stunning of Yes, chef. Kind of yes, chef. Gray. Yes, chef. It's moldy lettuce, for God's sake. We want a wedding, not a divorce. So this needs to be redone. Yes, chef. OK. Chef Gordon came back, and they were looking at my lettuce. They were like, this is terrible. It's like rabbit food. And it just it sent me over. Hey, Trace, everything under control? It was just like a lot of pressure. I don't want to be responsible in any way, shape, or form for somebody's wedding not coming off to the T. What's getting to you? Gordon is like, you know, take it seriously. And I just, I'm offended because I just, um, just take one second to, to collect yourself. If you felt you were singled out for some reason, I'm sure that wasn't the case. It's not about individuals today, you know? It's, it's right. about the team. So just I'm do everything do my you very can, best. And, and we just go from there. So I did my very best. You know what I mean? It bothered me immensely. And I think I just let my emotions get the better of me. And just the whole sum total of everything just kind of came, bam. It was like the proverbial straw. This is the most pressurized challenge I've done so far. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think two or three of them are starting to somewhat buckle under the weight of pressure to get this right. Welcome to the beautiful setting here for a, for a beautiful wedding. Tracy's disintegrated. Right. I mean, if it starts to go a little bit you know, weaker, then we've got no option but to jump in there, right. check it on, and bring it back up. It is my pleasure to pronounce you husband and wife. You may seal your marriage with a kiss. Hey, red team, blue team. The guests are starting to sit down in 10 minutes. Come on, guys, blue team, let's go. Oh, my god, that's not good. Oh, With just over 10 minutes to go before the wedding guests' appetizers are due to go out, both teams go into utter meltdown. Nelly, take it away, take it away. Here, 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 here. Can someone get the fire extinguisher? Me. Come on, let's get this wrap. Come on, let's go. Move it, move it, move it. Graham, I'm really sorry to do this, but I'm nervous. They're down. No one's got clear. Everyone's disorganized. And I need to get your chef jacket on Wait. with me now and jump in here. Yes. Let's go. To prevent ruining the most important day of this bride and groom's lives, the judges decide to step in and help. What's going on, guys? You need an intervention? You got the coats on? You got no choice. You got no yeah. choice. You're gonna go yeah. in? You got to do it. It's important. Okay. Top to bottom, left to right, right? Have a system. Boom, boom, nope. Top to bottom. Boom, 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 boom. I'm feeling like the pressure's on. This is no burger challenge. I'm not messing this up. I'm not going to this up. Red team, let's go. Let's go. The red team is the first to get their Caesar salad and tartlet appetizers out. Blue team, let's go. Blue team, we're being called. While the blue team's setbacks with their lettuce means they've yet to have any plates leave the kitchen. We've just had the toast of the bride and groom. Let's go, guys. We're being called blue team. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Blue team is Stop, madam. Stop, please. Put them down, please. Yeah, they're burning. They're, they're, they're burning the tarts. Dry. This is the blue team, yeah. and they're burning them. They can't serve a burnt tart. No. Blue team, Lee, yes, sir. please check these tarts. They're overcooked, don't send them. Blue teams, red teams, the difference is night and day, guys. Just touch how crispy that is, it's overcooked, OK? But don't send overcooked tarts. <laughs> impossible. I don't know what happened, but Tracy, you know, she did have that responsibility for baking the tartlets. I'm just going to go ahead and get my ticket ready for Atlanta. That's what I'm going to do today. Stop it. No, I'm serious. Stop it. Tracy, we're not done yet. Stop, 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 stop. There goes the yeah. Try not to drip the sauce all over the plate. Yeah, can we have a nice spoon of sauce on the plate, not yeah. dripping everywhere? Yeah. It's a wedding, guys. Who's sourcing it? Who's sourcing the plate? I am chef. Mikey, typical. Slow down. 
Our team is focused. We're finishing our last run of the salad. And then all of a sudden, I hear Chef Ramsay just chewing out the poutine. Put it on with some finesse. It's a wedding. All right. If Lee wanted to win, he should have picked me, absolutely. With the blue team finally getting their appetizers out, they have a chance to redeem themselves with the surf and turf entrees. Let's go, guys. Lee, yes, sir. you've got everything to pay for now, OK? No one's lost, OK? You've got everything to pay for. Get the team together well, and make sure well, that we have this. Good. We have this. We have this. Let's go. Work as a team, yes? Hey, 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 hey. Come here. Come here for a second. Come here for a second. Come here. Straight, look at me. Just calm down. I'm good. We're not done Just yet. tell me what needs to be done. I'm okay, done. So, just hey. So you know, I'm hey! Hey! Look at me. We're not done yet. Look at me. We're not done yet. Okay. We're not done yet. Okay. We have this. We okay. have this. Our food is better. We have this. Come on. I just sort of said, okay, Tracy, get it together. Because, you know, I didn't want to let my team down. And I didn't want, you know, to be out of the game mentally so much that it was going to drag down my team. Here we go, guys. Start plating up, then. Let's go. I don't know where the salmon is. Anyone? David, if you don't know where the salmon is, you've right got there, to find there, out where it is. Come on. Right there. Damn, twice. It's a Sorry. wedding, guys. You can't just say, I don't know where the salmon is. Come on. As entree plating begins, the red team gets off to a shaky start. Jerome, where did you put the salmon? It's right there, Dave. This, this is there. ours. OK, yes. well, I asked every, uh, whatever. No worries. Whatever, That's I'm on it. it. Whatever, whatever, Hold whatever. Hold it together, whatever. red whatever. team. Whatever. Hold it together. Meanwhile, the blue team seems to have finally turned things around. Tracy, yes, those sir. plates are looking fabulous. Thank you, sir. Absolutely brilliant. Well done. Red team, blue team. Guys, keep it up. As the entree is served, restaurateur Joe heads back to the banquet floor. How are we doing, folks? You enjoying your dinner? Yeah, uh, it's excellent. Is it cooked to your liking? Yeah. What do you think? Looks good? It Does looks the food great. look good? Awesome. Awesome potatoes. They like the feedback Joe gets will play a part in determining the winner. I just found out my salad's from the blue team, and it, yeah, it's quite good. I ate food from the red team. I had the Caesar salad, and not only did the presentation look nice, it actually tasted good, and that's important because food better taste good. So I was served the blue team's food, and uh, with the steak, it, in my opinion, it was a little bit fattier, almost like a New York steak. I tried his steak, which was a lot better. I think he was on the red team. My steak was great. It was tender and melted right in my mouth. The blue team cooked your beef and your salmon. And was it to your liking? Yes. How was your salmon cooked? Uh, Cook-wise, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. It was great. And the beef? The beef was a excellent. Bit. It, was, it was rare, but I like it. Nice. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very much. Excellent. Thank you. That's it. Stop. Woo! Oh, good job, guys. Good job, both teams. I think my team managed well to really come back and, and put the appetizer saga behind us. The entrees went on time and everything was cooked perfectly. We did it, we pulled it off. You guys are amateur chefs. Even as professional chefs, having a wedding to cook for, for 230 guests is a tall order for Good us. Time. Yeah. You guys pulled it off. Well done. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Well done. We need to sit yeah. and dissect this every ounce of the way because right now you're all equal. Get yourselves a glass of champagne. Champagne's on us. Yeah. Good job, guys. And we'll see you in the morning for the verdict. Yeah. Good job. I think we kicked butt. You nailed it on every single point. We got it done. If, if we go into pressure test, I'm not going to be happy. Morning, guys. Morning. The red and the blue team arrive back at the MasterChef kitchen, awaiting the news of which team served up the win in yesterday's wedding challenge and which team will face today's pressure test. So far in MasterChef, that for us was the most demanding, the most difficult, and the most pressurized challenge we've ever done. And you did it. You both produced the goods. And it could have gone either way. There was one small difference that we all agreed, and it helped propel that team into the Premier League. Congratulations. To the red team. Yeah. David Miller, you started off 
in a sort of panicky fashion, but the attention to detail was phenomenal. Yeah. The seasoning on the onion rings, the seasoning and the texture of the mashed potato, the palm puree, you I'm... really stepped up. You were the hero of that team. Wow, like for the, for the first time, I'm the guy that saved the day for my team, um, you know, as a result of, you know, a little salt and pepper. How'd you feel? The biggest compliment I've ever gotten. Thank you, guys. OK. Red team, you'll be watching from up there. Off you go. Woo! I experienced the gutting agony of defeat, and I have to snap out of it and just think forward about the pressure test. Good luck, blue team. I was shocked because I had just like lost the last team challenge. So I'm still like sort of recovering from that. And now I've got to go face another pressure challenge. So obviously this judgment does not sit well with me. So for today's pressure test, you will be making fresh pasta and sauce to go with it. You could do flat pastas, fettuccine, pappardelle. You could do filled pasta, raviolacci, tortellini. But at the end of the day, we're really asking you to bring together two independent techniques that culminate into one incredible, authentic dish. Off you go. Back to your stations, please. OK, this is an individual pressure test. Today, there's added pressure because the stakes have just doubled. Two of you will be leaving MasterChef. The stakes have just doubled. On the back of this pressure test, two of you will be leaving MasterChef. When I found out two were going home, I was definitely having a lot of self-doubts, just feeling like, you know, this may be the last time I'm cooking in here. That's right. Half of you will be eliminated. That's an extra little bit of anxiety through me, just to know that half of us were going to stay and half of us were going to go. 90 minutes to cook a stunning pasta dish. Starting from now, off you go. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Making fresh pasta is never an easy task, but to do it successfully under this type of pressure and in just 90 minutes is a big test for any cook. I'm not worried right now. So Tracy is making a mirepoff. She hasn't even started with the pasta yet, which is curious. I mean, I don't think it's tragic yet, but I, I, would, I would certainly jump on the pasta first. But the longer resting time, the better the result in terms of the texture, the more to play with, right? Yeah. You see Jake working the pasta with the, with with the, the blades. The thing is, you have to yeah. have the heat of your hands. Right. That's how you right. put the love in it. Yeah. That's why when you watch an yeah. Italian woman make pasta, this is for real. When they knead it, they're not just kneading it like with their hands. They put their hips into it. You right, know? It's right. all about the full body motion, mm -hmm. and that's what makes it sensual. I think he's still angry. Love Definitely. You can you, you see that coming through in his actual working, the way he was mixing the eggs and just, yeah, he, he's very angry right now. I was still pissed off at the fact that I was in this position. I just focused on making some really good pasta dough. You seem a little bit disappointed at the loss. You're going to be able to put that aside? Because I can tell that you're angry. And, you know and, what, Joe? And that, that, that will permeate your cooking if you let I it. I know, and I'm a, I'm, I totally believe that, man. When mm -hmm. I'm in a bad mood, my food's going to taste like So, so you got to like be able to. I'm not angry. I'm let down. Whether one person or two people going home will not affect the way I cook. And you know I always cook to be on the top, so it doesn't really matter to me. Adley, what are you doing? Just finished my filling for uh, ravioli, some roasted eggplant there, some garlic, some ricotta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of garlic in there. A lot of garlic, yes. yes. And I'm, you know, I, I want that bite. I want that, that fresh garlic kick. Yeah. Just be careful the garlic. It's very strong in the garlic. Yep. So you haven't even started making pasta yet. Are yeah. you worried about that? I need to do um, get my sauce on because it has to cook down for quite a while. I'm gonna try a lasagna with a like a with a meat sauce. Lasagna bolognese. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Um, um, 90 minutes. So... One hour to go. Oh Mike, what are you making? I'm making basically um, just a I don't know actually what I'm making. It's, this is the first time I'm making it. I got these beautiful shiitake mushrooms and dried porcini's and garlic. 
And I'm just trying to build this recipe in my mind because it was like my brain wasn't really working. So you're just kind of on the fly. 50% of you are going to go home on this challenge, right? Are you going to use this as a filling or as a garnish over the top? Is it going to be part of a sauce? You know, I think like, I think looking at it all, I mean, I'm not sure. Okay, guys, half of you are going home, so we're looking to have the best pasta I've ever had. You've had one hour. There's 30 minutes left. Make it count, guys, yes? <laughs> I believe this. I got on to um, making my pasta. That didn't go really that well. I do not believe this. You manage? Right. It goes down to Right, time. okay, Sorry. okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and what are you doing with it? I was going to do a lasagna, but with the time factor, I'm going to change and do ravioli. Ravioli? Yes, with okay. a meat sauce. Meat sauce. Yeah. What's going inside the ravioli? Ricotta cheese, and I think I may just flavor it up a little bit since I went in a different direction. Jake, so what do we got? I've got this fairly simplistic sauce. It's good sauce. I just uh, threw it over two stuffed calamari tubes into the oven. What'd you stuff it with? Uh, just a crazy mix, you know, herbs, fresh stuff, a little bit of pepper, garlic, uh, a little bit of wine. And wine. the stuffed calamari is part of the sauce? No, that's, that's like... That's like the, the main component. Yeah, that's the, the protein. Okay. Yeah, Jake's sauce tastes good, but Jake, I'm kind of thrown Jake's off by the idea of the squid being I stuffed. I don't understand. We asked him to make a pasta dish, and he's doing mm. stuffed squid, which is like a protein. So is the right. pasta garnish? Does that even qualify as a pasta mm. dish? <laughs> Chase's pasta's looking anemic. It's looking very white and it's looking sort of almost right. like there's no egg yolks in there. Right. So what is she doing? Yeah. She's now doing a ricotta with a bolognese sauce. Have you ever made a bolognese that needs to cook less than three hours? No. She's got That's a big that risk. Time. And Mike seems a little bit all over the place. He's got some Thank kind you. of like poached garlic and onions in the pan. I don't really understand what's going on yeah, in the right. station, but very so confusing. It's got some flavor, but no I flavor. don't know. I don't think that this is going to come together. Yeah. Last 10 minutes. With 10 minutes left, my pasta noodles are all tangled and drying out, and they're going to stick. Mike, yes, when you hang pasta, it's really important that you lightly flour it to stop it from sticking together. So as it dries, it dries separate. But if you hang wet pasta and it starts sticking together, you're screwed even before you start cooking that. Oh, The clock was just speeding down. Uh, panic definitely, it stuck itself in me pretty badly. Last two minutes for two of you. It's your last two minutes cooking on MasterChef. Come on, make it count. Mike, are you happy with that pasta? I am happy. OK. Jake's plating the pasta without saucing it. I saw all of it. So can do it. So come yeah. into one minute. One minute, un minuto. I was feeling at least relieved that I got everything done. And I have to say, I was like, that looks but ugly. Oh no, oh no. OK, guys, yep. 10 secondi. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, finiti. Stop that, guys. As the winning team watches safely from the balcony, the four who faced the pressure test await their fate. The judges have convened in the MasterChef restaurant where they'll taste the pressure test dishes individually. Ready for the first one? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. The two worst cooks will be sent home. This is the real deal. There's no do-over, oh, you know, give me five more minutes. If you're off, you're going home. Hi. Thank you. What is it? It is a um, ravioli bolognese. And do you think this dish is worthy of you staying in MasterChef? I'm not necessarily um, super proud of this dish. Are you done in MasterChef? Do you want to go home? No. You don't? No. The sauce from here smells delicious. You're just hard on yourself. Nice, rich, thick. I love the idea of the red wine and the bolognese sauce as well. Thank you. Pass is very thick.
Thank you, okay. Tracy. Thank you. Thanks. Great. I walked away from my career as a physician to be here. I left my son. I don't know about other people, but I certainly wouldn't do that for something that I was casual about. She didn't saute the pasta with the sauce at all. No. You know, she just kind of poured it on top. She focused too much on the sauce, and then the pasta was an afterthought. Although the sauce is not a true bolognese, but right. it's maybe the best sloppy joe I've ever had. Ready for the next one? Mm -hmm. so, It's always very unnerving when you got to go present to these judges. I mean, now there's two people going home, so obviously that intensifies everything that much more. How are you feeling? I think I'm presenting you with a with a great dish. What is it? It's a stuffed calamari over a handmade fresh fettuccine. I used classic Sicilian uh, marinara. And how did you cook the squid? I started the sauce in the pan, reduced it down, let the flavor sort of meld, and then put that over the squid and just baked it off. Thank you, Jake. Thanks. The reaction, or lack of, was definitely unnerving, but I wasn't like, OK, because they didn't respond, I'm going home. Quite frankly, the pasta, the fettuccine are quite good. Yeah. And if he had just done rings of calivari yeah. and quickly poached them in the mm -hmm. tomato sauce, it would have been a winner dish. I thought dish. the exact yeah. same thing, because the only thing that, that kind of gets me is the fact that by not tossing it with the sauce, we're now left with this right here, which is a, a cake of yeah. pasta. That's the first clumsy. Clumsy is really right. clumsy dish that I've seen him cook, and I can't think of a more severe time to produce a clumsy dish. Two down, two to go. Okay. My mind was going crazy. No, I don't want to go home. I definitely don't want to go home. Mike. Hi, Mike. Okay. What is it? Fettuccine with a mushroom cream sauce with uh, red and yellow bell peppers. Seems a little heavy-handed, a little bit much, but uh -huh. I guess we'll taste it. I was just praying that this is not the last time I'm presenting a dish to them. Please, no. OK. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. The cream is far too over-reduced. It's gone greasy. OK, but at the end of the day, in three tries, this is the first one that's a complete pasta dish. From sauce to pasta, cooked together. But there's a bit of confusion going on there. You know, it almost seems like there's two kind of dishes. You have the mushroom and the cream sauce. And then on the other side, you've got fresh basil and roasted peppers and things I that would have been nice with olive oil I somehow. disagree with you guys. I think it works. It comes together on the palate. And it's, it's a dish you might expect to get in a restaurant. Last up to face the judges, Lee. Two people are going to go home, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'll be OK. What did you make for us today, Lee? Today we have ravioli stuffed with roasted eggplant, garlic, and mint ricotta. How did you cook the, the stuffing and the ingredients? The garlic is minced and is raw, and the cooking of the pasta itself, together with the ricotta and the pine nuts, really get it um, a milder garlic taste. Let's try it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thanks, Lee. Thank you. The garlic is far too strong in there. Aside from raw garlic, I think the dish has some merits. I think that it has a very, very southern Mediterranean profile of flavors that I like. It's a shame because he has that level of bravado and arrogance that he thinks that inside I tasted it, it's good enough. Well, right. sorry, it's not good enough because mm -hmm. it just stinks of garlic. Right. The contestants wait while the judges determine their fate. This is just really drawing the pain out. It's killing me. It's time for the elimination, and two out of the four contestants will be leaving MasterChef. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most about how scared I was, I was probably like a 10,000. <laughs> that was a very tough pressure test. 
90 minutes to cook the most amazing pasta dish. Sadly, two of you will now be leaving MasterChef. Mike, you made a simple fettuccine with peppers and mushrooms. Mike, you will not be taking your apron off. Congratulations. And I think my knees buckled and I just felt relief and gratitude. The dish really surprised me. I had doubted it in its inception. I doubted it in its creation. On the plate, it blew me away. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you so much. To give me another chance to be in this game. I mean, you know, I want to stay here forever. Two of you left. Two of you will be going home. Tracy, you made a bolognese sauce over two raviolis. You will not be participating in MasterChef any longer. Please take your apron off. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. You have done so many amazing things, from the desserts to that hearty dish, and more importantly, you've shone. Thank you. It's been an honor cooking for Thank all of you. you. Thank you. Go home and keep cooking, Absolutely. all right? Thank you. Keep cooking. And know that as you cook, you got your mom right there next to you. Great job. Well done. Yeah. One thing that this competition has shown me is that I have a bright future ahead and I have a lot to offer to the culinary world. I love to bake and so, you know, there could be a little bake shop in my future. I have my mom's cookbook. I may just need to get some inspiration from that. The point is that the world has not seen the last of Tracy. Lee and Jake, I expected, on a personal front, to see you two in the final. So I'm a little bit pissed, to be honest, that you're both standing there. Jake. Yes, sir. You will be. Jake. Yes, sir. You will be. Taking your apron off. Yes, Your time is done in Master Chef. All right. Well, Lee, good job. <sighs> All right, Lee. You nice work. have been a huge source of inspiration. And do you know what? Stay away from construction because you are a talented guy. Thank you, Chef. Sorry to let you down, Graham. I put my neck out for you, and I, I would do it again in a second. I will vouch for him. I will make this guy better. I think you've done an incredible job. You've got a ton of potential. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank All you. All right. Lee, tonight, you danced on thin ice. You're a smart guy. You're so smart. So raw garlic inside that. You just nearly blew it, Lee. You nearly blew it. My old life, being just a working class stiff construction worker, yeah, those days are over. You know, it's all about food for me, and this has really driven it home. This experience has really opened my eyes to, I need to do this, I need to be in this environment. What's next for Jake is, is just learning. I mean, who knows? I could end up with the Cordon Bleu in France. You know, my fire is lit, I'm super pumped up, and uh, I'm, I'm ready to cook, man. Next time on MasterChef, the pressure is building as six amateur cooks become four. Game time, baby, game time. Your souffle was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Venison is cooked beautifully. I mean, it's cooked by an angel. That is going to taste like Gandhi's flip-flop. It, it looks like a walk through a crime scene. They'll take on their most difficult challenge yet. If you think we're tough, wait to see 
who you're cooking for. They'll face the culinary world's most feared restaurant critics. Where did you find fresh tomatoes? I actually used the tomatoes out of the can. Only four will make it through, and the results are shocking. And the lowest scoring dish, that person is... <laughs>